Hi everybody, this is Steve Grizzetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix.com Guide to Adobe Photoshop Elements. Here we are in part three of our series of tutorials talking about scanning photos and then cleaning up the photos once they've scanned. Now, for my mom and dad's 50th anniversary a few years ago, uh, somebody in my family found this picture. This was a family picture we had taken a long, long time ago. And as you can see, it wasn't well cared for. Somebody stuck it in the bottom of a drawer, got all beat up and torn up. It's not in very good shape. Um, pieces of it are actually missing. But I was able to take this photo and working with it, turn it into this photo much much better uh, there's not a lot of evidence of photoshop work in there i'm really proud of the work i did but i even replaced sections of the picture that you know <laughs> didn't even exist anymore and i'm really happy with the results but let's take a look at some of the tricks i used to get that out of this so let me zoom in a little bit on the picture i'm using Control plus or you can use command plus on a mac and you can see that when they taped it together, they didn't even get it even around dad's head and around my sister's head. So I need to somehow heal this up. And I'm going to try to use the little Band-Aid over here. This is the spot healing tool. This is an automatic tool for uh, healing or patching little scratches. And let's see what happens when I drag it over dad's hair. And it does a pretty good job of pulling that hair together in a way that doesn't look really obvious. And drag it across this forehead. This is always my first go-to tool. Got another piece in there. And most of the time it works pretty well. The challenge with it is sometimes, you know, it's just grabbing uh, content from around the picture. Every once in a while you end up with somebody getting an eyeball in the middle of their head. Or this ear, it's not going to be smart enough to know that there's an ear there probably well it actually did a pretty good job of filling in the ear from pieces around it so I did this mostly wherever I saw a tear or a crack even this background although later when I was working with the photo I was so unhappy with the background and how beat up it was I actually cut the people out of the picture and pasted them in a whole new background I created but you can see just by using this healing brush it's a little spot healing brush. There's actually another healing brush too. Uh, the, the spot healing brush is the automatic one and it does a really great job of kind of patching things in here. Don't worry about this top part here. We can borrow some information from another part of the picture and fill in the top. But you can see just in terms of cracks and tears, this does a wonderful job of filling that in. So we've already made some good progress. Now dad here, I may work on him some more. Let's see what happens if I paint over that we're starting to lose some of his hairline here so I just want to show you the other healing brush the other healing brush going down here to the uh, tool options bin the other healing brush works a little more like a clone tool you can make the brush wider or smaller by using the bracket open and bracket close keys on your keyboard or by using the slider on the tool options bin but I'm going to just alt or option click on his hair at this point and then drag down here and it's going to borrow the information from his hair let's borrow some hair up here and I can use it to paint in a little more hair for him so let's go a little deeper in here and see some of the other challenges we have lots of cracks lots of tears and again my spot healing brush does a pretty good job of patching most of that I'm going to keep my eyes open. In my first pass through, this is looking really good. Now, where we run into problems is down here, a large portion of the photo is missing. How am I going to fill in that spot? Well, what I did was a kind of cool trick. I'm going to just use the geometric or polygonal, polygonal lasso, and I'm going to just select this girl's dress. Now I'm going to copy it with Control C or Command C and Control V or Command V it to paste it. Now I have another layer of her dress here and watch what I'm going to do. I'm just going to flip it over. Let's go up here to Image, Rotate, and I don't want to flip the whole image. I just want to flip the layer, flip that horizontally, and now I have another half of her dress. You can see it's a little bit of a cheat but it's an effective cheat, right? And I can rotate that a little bit so that it matches. And we've got a pretty good dress 
right there for her. So I can click that, commit to that, and now all I need to do is patch in a couple of scratches here and we're in pretty good shape. I also can do that with her face and hair, believe it or not. May not be quite as effective, but let's give it a try. We'll go right down the center here. Going to select her face, her neck, maybe a bit of her hair. Don't worry if I select too much, we can remove it later. We'll select it and once again, I'm, I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste. And then I'm going to select that layer, make sure that it's selected in my layers panel. And then image, rotate, and flip it horizontal again. And now if I rotate it just right, it's going to be a tough match. Not 100% effective, but it's a good starting point, and I can patch a lot of things here. Look at that. That actually matched up pretty good. So now I've got the second half of this girl's face. I can take a soft edge eraser. So I'm going to select the eraser. I'm going to select a brush for the eraser, the sort of soft edge, and I'm going to make it much smaller using the bracket open and bracket close keys to affect its size. I'm just going to paint down here. Oops, painted on the wrong layer. Control Z going to drag down on her half of her face and just soften the edge between those two and we'll do the same thing on that upper layer here for her dress and now those two things are coming together I'm going to commit these layers by control E or command E with each layer selected so now they're actually part of the picture and I can use things like I'm going to see the spot healing brush can we possibly get rid of that white scratch across her head and it did a pretty good job you can see um, if I look really closely that it doesn't I picked up a little bit of hair in there so maybe I don't want to use that method but I'll be able to patch that scratch a lot easier and then uh, I'll borrow some more material here or some existing materials and paste it in here and we'll eventually be able to fill out this whole picture even the parts that are missing. So as we're patching the scratches, as we're patching the tears, as we're painting over areas that somehow got damaged over the years, or replacing areas that no longer exist, we can create a really nice new looking picture like this from that old beat up, scratched up picture. Quite proud of the results there. If you want to know more about touching up pictures, about working with uh, damaged photos that you've scanned in, or if you want to know everything there is to know about Photoshop elements, you want to check out all the tips and tutorials at moviepix.com or the moviepix.com guide to Adobe Photoshop Elements, the book I update every single generation. You can find it on amazon.com and uh, hope to see you again real soon. Take care.